Welcome to the Zyku training video. Today I'd like to demonstrate a quick install guide for the Zyku Coolbox IP PBX system. First thing we need to do is connect to the Coolbox system and the default IP address is 192.168.1.100. Configuration is undertaken using a supported web browser and therefore we need to ensure we have a configuration device such as a PC, laptop or tablet that can communicate on this 192.168.1. address. An easy way to achieve this, as you can see in the following diagram, is to ensure that your Coolbox and the PC used for configuration are both connected to the same switch. We also need to verify that the PC is in the correct 192.168.1. address range. I'll demonstrate now, using a Windows 8 machine, how we can verify this. On Control Panel, Windows 8, and navigate to the Network and Sharing Center. Go to change adapter settings on your network port, right click and select properties. Scroll down to TCP version 4 and select. And here we can see the IP address for this particular PC and it is in the correct network address range with address of 192.168.1.200. Subnet mask is correct and the default gateway isn't important in this instance. OK, let's try logging into our cool box. I'll use the default IP address 192.168.1.100, port 9999. Username is admin. Password is also admin. Once logged in and greeted with a security message asking me to change my password, which I'll do now, I'll go to System, Management, Enter the old password, replace it with a new complex password, and retype my new password. I type save, click OK, and my password has now been updated successfully. I'm logged out of the system, and now I need to log back in using my new complex password. If you need to change your default IP address, then we can do this quite easily. I'll go to Network Settings, Network, and change the IP address to what I need for my network, which in this instance is 2.115. Uh, and I'll change my gateway to 2.1. I'll save that. And I'm prompted to restart. Once restarted, I can log back into the system under the new IP address. And log back into the system as admin. I'll test the network to ensure it's working. And to do this, go to network settings. Troubleshooting. I'll put in the IP address of the local gateway and see if it's contactable, which you can see it is. I'll also try external to the network. I'll put in the DNS server for Google, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And again, this is shown as contactable. It's also at this point worth trying DNS to make sure you can resolve names as well. Next we need to check the time zone for the system. To do this go to system, time settings, check the NTP server to make sure you're happy and under time zone we need to select Europe and London. There we go. I'll select save and I'm prompted to restart, which I'll do now. Once the system comes back online, we need to log in again using the admin account. And 
and the system is now within the correct time zone. The next thing I'm going to do is create an extension. To do this, we need to go to Basic, Extensions, and as you can see, by default, there are already 10 extensions created. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to create a new extension, and to do this, go to New User, and you're greeted with the following information. In fairness, nearly all of what you require to create an extension is already populated. But I'll talk you through some of the key features detailed within this screen. So you've got a choice of protocols, either SIP or IAX. In this instance, we'll use SIP. I can rename the extension to give it a meaningful name, either a person or a location. We need a complex password. It already has one, but we can change that if required. We can give the extension an outbound CID, and this will be displayed when it makes calls. We need to select a dial plan for the ex extension. I'll explain dial plans a little later. If we had analog FXS extensions installed, they would be showed under analog phone and we could make this an analog extension. Voicemail is enabled, but we recommend that you change the password to something stronger. And if you put your email address into the email fax voicemail field to receive email notification. Web Manager is a nice feature. It is the user portal. And you access that using the extension number and the voicemail password. Agent should be enabled if you're using queues. NAT is used for when traversing firewalls, which we're not doing in this instance. And you can select the transport required. The default is UDP, which is fine. If you wish to use video calls, select video call and the video codex required. Finally, choose your audio codex. Select save. And our extension is now created. The next thing we need to do is connect a SIP endpoint to the PBX. So I'll need to open a new tab, input the IP address of the SIP endpoint, log in as administrator, go to accounts, the account needs enabling. Put in a simple display name for the phone. I need to enter the user ID, which is the extension number, authentication ID, also the extension number, and the extension password. The only other piece of information required is the address of the Coolbox system. I simply now need to Submit this information and the SIP endpoint is now ready to go. We can check on the device, it's shown as registered. So if we go back to the Coolbox system, look in the operator panel, and we should see an active extension, which we do lit up in green. So Office Phone 1, uh, extension 810 is active. Now that we've created our extension, we've got everything we need to make internal calls so we can call other extensions. However, we can't make outbound calls. To do this, we need to create a trunk of some description. If we look at the home page, we can see that this particular cool box has four inbuilt FXO so we can attach PSTN lines to this device. First we need to check if these PSTN lines are operational and the 
toolbox is configured correctly. So if I go into module settings, I need to check that it is set to analog and not E1 or BRI, which it is. If I go to basic and trunks, and go to FXO GSM trunks, and click new FXO GSM trunk, here I can configure my first trunk. So as we can see, here are the four channels. So I'll give the trunk a description. So I'll call it BT out and I'm going to select channel one. The call method, I'll leave this in order by default. Busy detection I'll leave on, but I'll change the busy count to four. change the volume settings if I wish and I'll change progress zone to UK I can determine a busy pattern if required I'll click Save and I'll activate my changes if I go to the advanced section there are some UK specific settings and they're under the global analog settings. So I need to check that caller ID is enabled and I need to check the signaling type to B23 and caller ID should start on polarity. I'll swap upper mode to UK and also change the tone zone to UK. Ensure echo cancel is selected and save my settings. This will force a reboot of the PBX. Let's log back into the PBX. Our trunk is now in place. We now need to determine how we plan to use the trunk to make outbound calls. We do this by selecting basic outbound routes. Go to dial rules and I'll create a new dial rule. I'll give the rule a name. So in this instance, I will call it dial out PSTN. I can set a pin against this if I wish to protect the line. I can also define time rules so that the trunk can only be used at certain times of the day, particularly useful from a security perspective. I'll select my trunk and I need to define a pattern of how that tr this trunk will be used. So I'm going to say anything starting with a 9 and as any additional digits can be used. I need to delete that 9 when making an outbound call, so I'll tell it to delete the first digit and save. Activate the changes and then go to the dial plans. Dial plan 1 is the default dial plan and all extensions use this by default. If I edit the dial plan we can see that by default Anyone using dial plans can do all of these things so they can call internally. If I now select our outbound rule and activate the changes, extensions using dial plan 1 can now make inbound and outbound calls. We can now call internal extensions. We can call external numbers using the PSTN line. The main thing missing now is, how do we handle inbound calls? Coolbox is very flexible in this respect. If we go to inbound control, we can see there's a host of options. We can define a ring group. A ring group is a collection of extensions.
we can define a call queue. Each extension can be an agent in the call queue. Or we can define an IVR. Interactive voice response is a powerful feature that allows you to automate how calls are answered and routed. Coolbox comes with two example IVRs that we can use to edit. Let's go to the working time one. And we can see it's set to play a welcome message. We can either change this message or define our own. To do that, go to custom prompts, select new voice, give the file a name, choose the format and the extension on which you want to record from. Go back into the IVR. An IVR expects the caller to press a key on their telephone keypad. Key press events determine what action the IVR needs to respond to. In this example, if the caller were to press 1, they would go to extension 800. Time-based rules can be used alongside your IVRs to provide extra granular control. In the time rule, we can define the time, the day, date, and month, and what are actions to take in the event it's matched or it does not match. We can change this to say go to a voicemail. We now need to control our inbound calls and we do this using inbound routes. On the general screen, as we can see, all calls originating from the FXO GSM channels will go to the IVR during working times. We can change this to go to an extension, a ring group or a queue. Port DIDs can be used in certain instances so we can define the port. A useful feature is we can attach a label to identify the port and we can set a destination. So in this instance, it goes to extension 800. Number DIDs are typically used for SIP trunks or BRI, PRI lines. So you can define a DID number, where it wants to be routed. And if we choose, we can also set DOD numbers. And that's it. A basic setup is complete. To remind you how we achieved this, first we needed to connect to the Coolbox on its default IP address. We changed the password for security reasons. We reconfigured the network settings on Coolbox to match our needs. We set the time zone. We created an extension. We configured an analog trunk to connect Coolbox to the PSTN. We configured an outbound rule to allow us to make calls over the PSTN. And finally, we configured inbound rules to control inward calls. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you'll join us again in the future. Thank you.